my friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today we will introduce um, dialogues, how to show some text uh, inside a nice dialogue box. So let's start right away with an example um, we had from a previous map, a non-playing character created here, which is the Doctor from Doctor Who. Um, if you're not familiar with Doctor Who, it really doesn't matter. I just want to make a character that talks to the hero when we are close to, uh, to him and when we press the action key, which is by default space. Um, so to create a non-playing character, it's this icon here, but we already have one. It has the sprite of the doctor and um, if you want to make it show a dialogue, uh, the simplest way is to set the action show a dialogue here. Um, and it's, it's more than enough for standard simple uh, interactions. If there is nothing dy dynamic, which means if the, this character always says the same thing, you can just use that. And then we will see uh, more advanced, the more advanced way of doing things with um, scripts. So let's just show a dialogue. So in this text box here, you don't want to directly type the whole dialogue. Uh, and that's because of potential translations, future translations of your games. So you need to type the ID the identifier of your dialogue. So we will create a dialogue and we will call it, for example, doctor.hello. And we are using dot as a separator. And this dot separator will automatically in this UI and the Solaris Quest editor UI uh, be shown as a hierarchy. So I'm pressing OK here. And now I need to define the content of my dialogue and that can be done in the dialogues file which is in languages then your language then text dialogues dot that this one um, so on the left part here you have your list of dialogues which is completely empty initially so i'm creating a new di new di dialogue sorry by pressing the plus icon here and the ID of my dialogue we, must be uh, whatever ID I put in my NPC, in my non-playing character. And yeah, as I said before, the dot is automatically uh, interpreted as a, um, as a separator here. There is no real file and, files and folder here, it's just the display. Uh, right, I'm, I'm editing only one file here, which is dialogues.dat. Um, okay, so I have my dialogue here, and here I can just set, uh, define the content of my dialogue. So maybe he will say, hello, I am the doctor. Doctor who? Just the doctor. All right, so this is my text, my, my content, and this is my ID, doctor.hello. Uh, so we will not discuss really translations today, but if one day you want to translate your game to another language, you will have multiple folders here, English, French, German, I don't know, Japanese. And you want to create a dialogue file for each language. The identifiers of your dialogues should be the same, so there must be a doctor.hello uh, dialogue in all dialogues files and only the content will, will change depending on the language. So that's the whole idea. Um, okay, I think we can already test this. I'm not on the correct map. Uh, okay, I have two maps that, looks, that look very similar to two previous tutorials. Um, let me edit the initial game script. My initial maps should be this one, first map. It's this ID here. 
the map ID. Okay, so the doctor is here. And he says, hello, I'm the doctor. Doctor who? Just the doctor. So, okay, it works. And how does it work? Uh, where did we define this nice uh, graphics and the fact that the text is displayed gradually and that there is a sound played when text is uh, displayed? That's actually define, defined in pure Lua in this dial dialog box dot Lua script. So you can even change it, adapt it to your needs or change uh, the colors, the sprites, anything you want. So it's quite a powerful dialog box already. Uh, it's, it's a complicated script. Um, we have other dialog box scripts in other projects like in the Zelda resource pack. Uh, we have one which is very, very similar to A Link to the Past, of course. But this one is is, uh, is free. It's uh, GPL. So, yeah, you can just use it in your in your project. It's open source. Um, okay, so that was the first simple example of, of dialogue that requires no Lua scripting. You just put the idea of your dialogue here and you define it in your dialogue file here. Um, just as a side note, there is a second uh, file in this languages folder which is called strings.dat. It's the same idea as dialogues but it's actually for all simple strings that don't need uh, the dialog box system. Um, and by default, the, the head-up display uh, uses it. So it defines what is displayed in the, for example, here, when you, when you are close to an NPC, you have the speak text here. And this speak text is not hard coded, it's, it's, it is set here. So if you create a translation uh, to French, you, you can change it to parler in, in the French version. Um, but this is slightly off topic because we want to discuss um, dialogues. And what we call dialogue in Solaris is really um, text that is displayed like this on multiple lines, on usually by, by characters, but also sometimes by, by the game itself, um, or when you get a treasure or something. Okay, um, let's make a slightly more advanced example. Uh, let me move these teleporters here. And let's say that there is some fire here that actually allows the player to save the game. So when you get close to this fire here, you we want to be able to interact with it and, and to be able to save the game. Um, so how do we do that? Right now, the fire that I just put here is, is really just a tile. Even if it's animated, there is nothing interactive about it. And how to make it interactive? One way is to create another non-playing character. Even if, it's not a, even if it's not a human, after all, all we want is to um, define some some interaction that happens when we when we talk to the fire, and the game, the engine does not really care if it's uh, a human or or an object. Um, okay, so I will create. I created an NPC here, non-playing character. I will put just. I will put it here, and the idea is to make it invisible. And to make it invisible just leave the sprite unchecked here. Okay, and this time, unlike the doctor, we will not directly show a dialogue, because what we want is to um, save the game and show a dialogue that says your game was saved. 
So it cannot really be done just by setting the ID of a dialogue here. We want to define the behavior in, in a Lua script. So we check the second radio box here, called the map script. Um, as a side note, the subtype here should be generalized NPC. It just means that um, this NPC will have absolutely no behavior other than, other than uh, what we say here. Um, the doctor has actually the type, the subtype usual NPC, which is more adapted to human interactions. And that means, among other things, that when you talk to him, he will automatically move to, uh, yeah, he will automatically look into your direction here. So he's, he just, his sprite just turned to the left, to the right, sorry, and now uh, to the bottom. Um, Okay, but we will make another tutorial about NPCs in, in more details. If you don't want to wait, you can already read the documentation about non-playing characters. Um, but since the main topic of, of this tutorial is dialogues, I, I don't want to spend too much time um, diverging here. So back to what we want to do. We want this NPC to call the map script. And here we, we are going to need a name for our fire NPC here. Let's, let's just call it fire. And we are going, going to need a name to be able to identify it, to find it actually from our Lua code. So I just named it fire. And when you edit the map script, so the script of this map, first map dot Lua, you can double click here or this icon or even F4 is the shortcut to switch between map script and, and the map itself. This is how a map script looks by default. Um, so you have two events that are predefined here, but they are actually empty, so nothing happens until you put some code. This one is called when the map starts, and this one is called when the map uh, has started and the fade-in transition is done. So slight slight difference between both, but we will, we will not use the, these. We will just need to define what happens when we interact with the fire. So how to do that? Um, let's go to the documentation of um, non-playing characters. So non-playing characters are entities of the map. So they are under these three map entities, non-playing character. Uh, again, I recommend to read the doc, but what we will need is to define to define this event on interaction, which is called when the hero interacts in front of the NPC, um, provided that your NPC does have the action of calling the map script. Uh, so, we need to define the event on our NPC, and that's why we had to put a name here. When you give a name to any map entity, it automatically creates a variable in the map script that has this name. So we have a fire variable here, and the type of this variable is non-playing character. We, so we define this event on interaction on the fire object. And if this exists, then whatever code we put here it will be called. Um, let me just remove it just for a second, just to show you that it's not an error if it does not exist. But just nothing happens. And if it exists, then whatever code you put here will be called. So let's call game save. Um, the subject game was created here. It's the game where this map belongs to. And the map itself is actually uh, 
the, the current map. Uh, yeah, let me show the documentation of the type game to check that there is indeed, and it's the first one, there is indeed a function called save that just indeed saves the, saves the game. Um, by the way, this syntax, if you are wondering, it means whatever parameters was were passed to this whole file, I put them in this variable. So I put the first parameter in, in this variable and it turns out, turns out that indeed the engine when it runs a map, it will call your map file, your map script and pass the map object itself as a parameter. Um, if it's unclear, you don't really care, <laughs> but we will make some more tutorials to explain this. Here I'm really interested in the code of my NPC, not really about uh, about the map script, about the map object itself. But please read the documentation of map if you are curious. It it explains with a lot of simple example uh, wh what you can do here and what does it mean. Okay, so I want when I'm interacting with the fire, I want to save the game, but I want I also want to show a dialogue. And to do this, there is start dialogue, the start dialogue function, which you can find here. It takes three parameters, but these ones are optional. They are more for quite advanced stuff. We are only using the first one in this example. We want to pass the dialogue ID. So really, it's, it's really just the same thing as what we did here. We we passed, we defined the, the ID of the dialogue to call. Um, let's call it game saved. And that it means that I need to define in my dialogues file, a game saved dialogue. And it will say, your game was just saved. So actually, if I remove this line, then my NPC is really, really equivalent to uh, setting the dialogue directly here. But since I want to do a little bit more, I want to also save the game. Then I do it from Lua. I hope it's clear enough. If not, please ask on Discord. Your game was just saved. Okay, and how can we check that the game was really, really saved? Um, it's, it's not that easy. Yes, it is. Let's just put an enemy here. So we'll see later how to create enemies, but it's, it's really easy. Um, yeah, let's say it's a goblin. Just to have, just as a way of changing the number of hearts. Uh, okay, so I just lost uh, like two hearts. And if I don't save, and I run the game again, I'm back to five hearts. This time, let's try to save. Okay. And it worked. I did save the game when, when, when I had only four hearts remaining. Okay. You cr just successfully created um, a place to save your game. But let's make it uh, a tiny little bit more advanced. Um, let's Let's say we want to ask the, the player if they want to save the game or not. So to do this, we will create another dialogue, which will be called game save question, for example. And it will ask, do you want to save your game or the game? Um, or just do you want to save? I don't know yes or no and actually in our dialog box script there is a feature to ask questions to the player and to display a cursor 
Uh, the dialog box always work in groups of three lines and when you want to tell the dialog box that there is a question you need to create a property here which is called question and the value should be one it will mean that the last two lines of the group of three are the possible answers of a question to a question so do you want to save let's slightly change our code here to ask the question instead of immediately oops instead of immediately saving the game and see if act, see if the question works yes so the cursor feature is working here i can say yes or no i haven't done any code that takes into account whatever is decided by the player but let's do this uh, right now and to do so it's actually here that we will use this callback optional parameter we are still not, not using the info parameter um, but here we will need the callback so how does it work the callback is actually a value of type function so it's an anonymous function um, and this function itself has a parameter which is the answer to your question it can be one if if it's the first answer or, or two if it's the second answer so if it's one it means yes okay because this is one and this is two if it's one uh, we just save and otherwise we do nothing special and if it's one we also say the game was saved let's say so and start another dialogue which is the, the one I created created in the first example in the previous example um, okay so here I passed as a parameter a function so I'm calling this function from the engine start dialog and I'm passing two parameters the, a string and a function and this uh, function this anonymous function is called a callback it means that it will not be executed right away but it will be executed later when the dialog is finished so it's it's a callback if you if you are familiar with javascript or, or python or just lua then uh, you will not be shocked <laughs> otherwise maybe it maybe it can feel new to you but in any case i i hope it's it's clear enough um you're just passing some code that you want to be executed later and and later here means in this context after the dialogue so at this point of the simulation uh, this was called and this function is stored somewhere in memory uh, by the engine and it will only be called when I make a decision here and when I answer something so if I say if I say no nothing happens and if I say yes your game was just saved. Um, so you will see that in Solaris there is a lot of uh, functions that can take callbacks like this. So you do you do something, and when it's done, you want to do you want something else to to happen. So it's a very common pattern in a lot of languages, and it also exists in in Solaris. Okay, so I hope this was understandable enough. Um, there are really not a lot of lines of code here, but maybe a lot of new concepts if you are new to, to programming or if you are new to, to callbacks. But again, feel free to join our Discord and we are always here to help. Um, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Have fun with your dialogues and, and your texts. 
and see you next time. Bye.